This episode is brought with thanks to my Patreon supporters. What a lovely, sexy bunch of awesome people you really are. Hello, I'm a British person and I bloody love Tremors. It has everything you could want in a movie. Action, adventure, comedy, horror, a great script, great acting, great characters, great effects. It's all pretty great. It's my all-time favourite movie and I would watch it so often as a kid that it once drew my mother to try and kill me. And she would have succeeded too, but I threw out a classic Burt Gummer one-liner to make her laugh and distract her so I could run away. So imagine the size of my erection when I found out that Tremors 2 was coming out. It may have been direct to video, but it also found its way direct into my heart. Genuinely, I love Tremors 2. I do feel the need to get that out there straight away. Because... Like any movie, it's far from perfect. Plus, in the lead up to the Tremors 6 release... That's right, 6. Tremors... 6. I'm going to review all four of the currently released sequels, and maybe even the TV series if you guys enjoy these. So let's stop playing silly buggers and tuck into Tremors 2 Aftershocks. The movie opens with sex noises. <coughs> Blimey, Aftershocks indeed. <coughs> no, it's just a poor oil worker desperate to get away from a tiny mole. Oh wait, no, it's a bloody great graboid. Practical effects are the best. Right, this is definitely sex noises. Wait, wait, it still could be sex. Come on, wildfire. Come on, boy. Still could be sex, I guess. That's what you're into. No, returning Tremors character Earl, complete with long hair, now owns an ostrich farm. Oh dear, I guess discovering a new species doesn't come with fortune and glory. But Earl's luck's about to change as taxi driver Grady here delivers Senor Ortega, who tells Earl about a little problem south of the border. Graboids. Can you not prescribe a cream for that? Senor Ortega wants Earl to spend some time at his oil refinery killing off their little infestation. You want somebody to go Graboid hunting? There's your trailer line. Uh, senor, uh, please, please, we have already spoken to your partner, Senor Maquis. Uh, he is unwilling to help us. So I'm second choice. Cheers. Plus, Val was too busy almost dying in space, so we'll gloss over that. Grady convinces Earl to consider the offer. But Earl's a little apprehensive because last time he sold all the rights and didn't make any money. Well, you must have got a percentage. I should have got a lawyer. I'm surprised agents weren't breaking down your door. This October 1974. Yeah, she's there to remind me not to keep chasing after things I'm never gonna get. Remember that slight plot point because it lays the foundation for the most unlikely reveal ever later. When Earl realizes that Senor Ortega is offering 50 grand per graboid, he changes his mind. Oh, and I'm going with him. Ah, muy bien, muy bien. Why does he let the taxi driver he literally just met tag along? Please, please, we have already spoken to your partner, Senor Maquis. Uh, he is unwilling to help. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. Not that they're going to let us forget about Val. Earl really needs to let go. They soon arrive in Mexico and meet the gang, where Senor Ortega offers them double if they can catch a live graboid. Double? Alive? Have you ever seen one of these things? Overreact much? It is only a suggestion. Exactly. You know, Val wouldn't have been this irrational. Why didn't you try asking him? We also meet Kate, the sexy geologist and obvious love interest for Earl. Hmm, bit sexist. Hmm, maybe not. This movie was made in 1996, but it could have been 3006, am I right? The next morning, Earl and Grady head out to do some graboid hunting, being as loud as they possibly can to draw them in. And of course it doesn't take long for one of them to take the bait. you got me movie. Because graboids are morons, they fall for this and are blown up. And soon enough, they're blowing graboids up left, right and centre. Yes. Yes. 
Movies don't use practical effects nearly enough anymore. This shot may have been the result of a very small budget, but it works so well. It forced the filmmakers to think creatively, whereas now all you have to do is stick a nerd in front of a computer and he'll fix it in post. Ah, the 90s. I yearn to be in you again. In a sexual way. Grady and Earl then do the tacky thing and discuss money. That makes 300,000 a piece. Wow, not bad. I'm thinking theme park. Do you know what $300,000 would buy you in 1996? This. Actually, this actually costs a lot more, so maybe more like this. Yeah, great day out. But Grady's getting complacent and is nearly killed by this awesome practical effect. But uh-oh, they're not out of the water yet as it chomped down on the chain they're dragging behind the truck. This really is a great scene. They save on costly effects while being fun and exciting and utilising the monsters in a new way. This is exactly what a Tremors sequel needed. Pity it ends through sheer luck. Maybe you should have tried shooting the chain grade, you bleeding idiot. Earl, oh, that's going to be the first ride of my theme park. You have no idea how much theme parks cost to develop. They realise that they're going to need a little bit of help, so Earl gets on the phone to future Tremors sequel's tentpole, Burt Gummer. Earl. Oh! Earl! You fought monsters together. You really didn't remember him. Bert's pretty cut up about his wife Heather leaving. Said I couldn't handle life without the threat of global war. Bert would probably love 2018 then. Well, in, uh, in that case, I don't know uh, if you'd be interested in this. I'm down in Mexico, see, and uh... As amazing as that shot is, it just wouldn't be allowed, would it? Let's be honest. A graboid kind of situation. <laughs> okay. Kate then makes a shocking discovery. Oh my god! What? what? Uh, okay. I've been staring at this fossil for over a month and I just realized what it is. <laughs> hey Earl, that, that looks like one of those uh, spikes on their side. So geologist Kate has been staring at this thing for months, clueless. But Grady, the taxi driver, glances at it once and has it all figured out. They're clearly both in the wrong careers. Then hurrah, Bert arrives and shows off his weapons collection. Thermite, C4, TNT, high explosive, H. Is there such thing as low explosive? <laughs> well, y yes, son, there he is. I'm I know I'm seconds from giving this movie a rim job, but this is great writing and great character. I'm so happy! And it's great to see Bert doing what Bert does best, killing graboids. But why is he on the ground? Why in dear God is he on the ground? The man's insane! Memo. Four pounds of... C4 may be a little <coughs> excessive. He's also the world's first vlogger. Go Team Bert! Earl and Grady spot a graboid moving away from them, so they decide to follow. But they end up with a little more than they bargained for and panic reverse into a ditch. Thankfully the poor killer monster appears to be sick and it won't even eat its favourite snack of remote controlled car. Jesus, Brady. Amazing. How slapping a graboid hasn't become a meme, I'll never know. Overjoyed at having caught a live one, Earl radios in for help. But as they wait, things take an unexpected turn. <laughs> God almighty. Another round of applause, please. This time for the sound designers. We can't just sit here. Jesus, listen to it. This is a horrific scream, and it made me shit myself as a kid. Still does. They go to check out poor Mr. Graboid. Or should that be poor Mrs. Graboid as they see that something has burst out from inside. Shit's got real now, and it doesn't help that the approaching Pedro stops at the side of the road, leaving them to yomp across the country. Jesus. Oh dear. Hey, there he is! Pedro? Oh dear, oh dear. Here's another example of an effective reveal. This film's a great example of build-up and payoff. The next scene after discovering that the radio tower is also destroyed is another great example. Except this time it's switched. We expected a great big monster, but instead we get this tiny little chap, which the sequels go on to call Shriekers. Mainly because... They shriek? Duh? 
Whilst doing more vlogging, Bert also has the misfortune of meeting the Shriekers. Oh, no, I hope he's not dead. Of course he isn't, he's Bert fucking Gummer, bitch. Back at HQ and Julio's leg is also introduced to a Shrieker while he awkwardly tries to hug Kate. Good job Earl and Grady arrived 90 seconds too late to save the day. These things are just too much. More top marks for the practical effects though. They work out that each Graboid produced three Shriekers and that there were eight Graboids left and that means that there are a total of 20 of the little buggers running around. That is until Bert returns, having slaughtered all but one, which he kept so they could have it as a pet or something. Good job the camera pans away so we don't have to see that puppet trying to awkwardly eat. They discover that the Shriekers can only see heat, hence why they keep trying to eat engines. And they also reproduce by simply eating and then puking out a baby. If they reproduce like this, then what is even the point of the Graboid stage of their life cycle? I mean, science. Explain that one. You can't, can you? But then, oh no, Shriekers, they got into Bert's MRE stash. Gotta run into this half-built building. But it's okay, they can use doors to get around and find a good spot where Bert can accidentally shoot a hole through the only remaining car. They're also spotted by the little bastard Shriekers and have to hide, where we get the payoff to this line at the start. This October 1974. Yeah, she's there to remind me not to keep chasing after things I'm never gonna get. Are you ready for this? I was even a playmate once. <laughs> Gave my dad a heart attack. Come on. October 74? Shit! <laughs> oh, that's just swell. Not contrived in the slightest. Not the world's biggest convenience. Mmm. Bert's not having any of this, so he decides to take action. <laughs> It's a good job that these incredibly fast creatures can't outrun an old man. Now that they're trapped, Earl freezes himself with a fire extinguisher so he can sneak inside to grab a bomb. But before he can sneak out, he starts to melt, so he has to improvise and just sets one willy-nilly. Where the hell was the bomb? I don't know. I didn't have time. I just threw it in your truck. You what? If Bert's concerned, you know it's going to be a big one. God, Bert, don't tell me it's not enough. Not enough. It's... Never mind. Never mind. Just run. Faster. Oh, this is going to be good. No! No, no! Keep going! It's gonna be big! This is gonna be crap, isn't it, after all this build-up? I mean, what kind of explosion can four million dollars total budget buy you? Whoa! Okay, yeah, to be fair, that was a pretty good explosion. Mmm. Mmm. This movie's butthole tastes so good. Hooray! The Shriekers are all dead and they've destroyed an entire oil facility. Not sure Senor Ortega is gonna thank you for that. So that was Tremors 2. Squee! It's funny, exciting, engaging, it has great effects, great characters, a great script. I love it. It uses its small budget creatively, and you wouldn't know. And to be honest, sometimes I can't decide if I prefer this one to the first. Oh, who am I kidding? They're both bloody marvellous. But about the third one... If you would like to support the show, please consider backing it on Patreon, link below, or of course there is my book. Please consider backing viral as well. If you don't want to, that's fine. Please subscribe, please share the video, please like it and all that good gubbins. And I'll see you next time where I'm not going to be as lucky as reviewing a good film.